Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo and I am beyond excited to introduce to you my guest for this week. He is none other than the NXT North American champion, Leon Ruff. What's up, Leon? How are you? I'm assuming that you're not used to hearing that just yet, right? No, I'm not. It's still, it's still pretty uh, mind-blowing to hear. I, you know, I got to say this, Leon, like, let's just start off with that. I mean, your moment last week on NXT winning the NXT North American Championship, you can definitely say that it shocked the entire WWE universe. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what that moment felt like for you. That moment, it felt like everything that I did to pursue wrestling, everything, every sacrifice that I made was worth it. It felt validated. You know, it felt like. I, I, it felt like it felt like I was not that I was right, but I kind of had to have my own back, and it, it felt good to know that I, it, it paid off. Like I, I did myself a good job, basically. You know, I don't know, kind of explain it, but I, I, I just for you. yeah, basically because you know I was doing a, a lot of work, and I, I just kept telling myself, you know, if you keep doing this, you know, one day, you know, it all pay off. So when it all did, it was just it was a great moment. So how did it feel for you when you found out that this would be happening, especially defeating a champion, a competitor, somebody <laughs> like Johnny Gargano? It was, so, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it because I, at first I thought it was a joke. I thought somebody was just playing a prank on the new guy and it's like, yo, we're going to make him believe this. And then we're going to, you know, I guess, you know, see what he, what he said, what he, how he looks when we tell him no. But, you know, when I found out it was real, it was, you know, it, I had to take a, I had to take a, you know, second to think because uh, Johnny Gargano was somebody that I admired a lot when I when I discovered who he was on the independent scene. You know, I started to watch a lot of his matches and his documentaries, and I, you know, used to write a lot of uh, notes about him. So not only to wrestle him on TV, but to you know, take the title from you know from him, it was it was it was mind blowing. I, I couldn't believe you know I got the opportunity to do it. I felt really uh, fortunate for it. Who who relayed the message to you? Matt Bloom, Matt nice. Coach uh, Coach Bloom uh, relayed the message to me because I didn't know at first. Um, I, all I know is that it said that I was on the I was on the card and I was wrestling Johnny, but no one told me anything, so I wasn't sure. And then so I just decided to reach out, and that's when they told me, you know, hey, yeah, you're wrestling today. You're also winning the North American Championship. <laughs> so you found out the day of. Like, how long yeah. before would you say? So. I would say so. It, I I found out at, at like ten thirty something in the morning. Wow, this is when I found so out. Exciting. It was. I came. I came to work early. <laughs> as soon as I got the message, you know, I was like, you know, I was packing my bag and I was just relaxing, trying not to, you know, you know, get my nerves going. And then I found out I was winning, so I was like, well, I gotta go. <laughs> I love how you're like, okay, I'm on a different level now. I gotta make sure I show up early to work. Like, if anything yeah. up early, that's the day to do so. <laughs> oh my god, that's so hilarious. Okay, so you know, you recently just signed with WWE in yeah. October. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't even been like a month, or it was a month, <laughs> and you're a champion now. Did you ever think that it would happen so quickly for you? No, I didn't even. I mean, I tell myself like, yeah, I, I, I knew I would be, a, you know, a WWE wrestler, but there were times where I didn't even think I'd be, a, you know, a WWE wrestler. And then, you know, I become a WWE wrestler, and now I'm like, okay, you know, if I train hard, and you know, if, if, if I, if I put on good matches, you know, something to come my way. And then I wake up one morning, and they say, hey, here it is. You know, is is it's, it's mind blowing. I, I still, I still can't process it. <laughs> Now, what do you think it is that you showed to WWE or that they saw in you that they were like, you know what, like, let's give this guy a chance and really just, you know, give him a chance. What do you think it was? I think it was, I mean, I can honestly say that it was the Aleister Black match. Oh, no, I'm sorry about that. I can <laughs> honestly say that it was the Aleister Black match because we ended up having a match twice. You know, um, the fact that, I do. I mean, I, I see a lot. Of, I see a lot of wrestlers uh, will, you know, will come and just go through the motions, you know, and get it over with because they're not shining. You know, they're not the stars. But I feel like what they saw with me, they saw somebody who was willing, and it keeps falling again. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and they saw somebody, and, with, and I feel like with me, they saw somebody who was willing to, you know, take the extra step, go the extra mile. No matter how much time he's given, he'll you know make the most out of it. I I feel like that's what they saw. Somebody who makes out of most out of a, a little. 
That's amazing. The fact that, you know, sometimes you think that people aren't noticing all the little things that you're doing, but the truth is that they are and you're being rewarded mm-hmm. now. And that's really cool. So now, you know, let's talk about the fact that you this happened for you early on in your career and now you have so much ahead of you. What does it mean to you knowing that you officially have that big WWE moment in your career? I mean, it makes me feel like, you know, I, I always I wrestled in high school, but unfortunately, I let my grade slip and I couldn't continue to high school. I couldn't, I couldn't continue to wrestle in high school. And I remember my coaches telling me, you know, man, you could have been like a state champion. You could have been something if you would have if you know you would have acted right, if, you, if I would have paid more attention. So when I started wrestling, I started studying and I started, you know, uh, training. I, I really, really worked hard for it. So I, I felt like that's. I feel like now it's how I probably would have felt if I would have won that state championship, you know, in high, in high school. I felt like I felt like I did myself right this time. I didn't I didn't slack off or anything like that. I really put my best foot forward and, and did a lot of hard work. And it shows. It shows because, again, you've only been wrestling since, what, 2017? Yeah. And so it hasn't been that long. And so now, you know, let's talk about the fact that at NXT, there's a lot of people working behind the scenes. You know, there's a lot of coaches. There's a, there, you know, there's a lot of people back there. So for you, who are some of the people that you would say have been sort of a mentor to you, have given you some sort of advice that has really helped you out, just someone that you feel really has your back? Um, the, besides, uh, the obvious, my girlfriend, Aja, um, I would say wrestling wise, the first guy I would say would be Tommaso Ciampa. He, um, the first guy that I, I started messaging about, um, in the WWE that I started messaging about anything wrestling related. And he would always not just give me a, an answer, but give me a really, really, really detailed answer. And he would always manage to like really go into detail about whatever it is I asked him about, you know, and then. Um, I remember telling him, you know, that I was signed and how excited he was for me and how he just couldn't believe it. And he was like, man, I was just talking about it. Like, man, we hope that you're signed. You know, he was somebody that I, you know, I felt like had my back. Um, who else? Who else? Um, Shawn Michaels. That's a great John one. Michaels. Probably one of the best. <laughs> Shawn Michaels. And it's not that I forgot. It's just that it's unbelievable to say that you got to think about it. Like, no, let me, let me make sure it's true. But um, Shawn Michaels was somebody I, I feel like that's taken, a, you know, taking a liking to me. Um, he, you know, he, he just came up to me and, you know, just gave me a speech and he just, you know, told me to just soak it in. But the fact that he took the time to talk to me, to tell me how he appreciates what I do for the company, how he appreciates how I go out there and, and wrestle, you know, it means a lot. And it's coming from Shawn Michaels. So it's like, you don't even have to like, <laughs> yeah. say, like what a big thing that is. Obviously, <laughs> anybody that knows anything about wrestling knows like how huge yeah. that is. That's really cool. You know, just really soak in that moment. Speaking of soaking in that moment, have you gone back to watch your uh, your championship win? Oh man, I, uh, I have. Actually, it's funny. I haven't watched the actual, um, you know, NXT clip because I only watched my mom's clip because it has her crying in the background. That's the only clip I go to watch. So, I I mean, she recorded the whole thing. So I have seen the whole match, but I only watched the clip that my mom recorded because I can hear how just, I'm just surprised and how, you know, happy she was. Dude, that's so awesome. I can only imagine. You're like, mom, I made it. You know, everybody has that wild dream of, hey, not only do you want to be a professional wrestler, but hey, you want to eventually get to the biggest company, you know, on earth, and that's WWE. And for a lot of people, that may sound sort of kind of, you know, like a crazy daydream. No, I mean, it, it, it definitely was, especially because your parents want the best for you. And for them, the best is they want to make sure you have a stable job and you want, you know, you have a roof over your head. So when you say, hey, I'm going to leave this job that is going to guarantee that to pursue wrestling that might not guarantee it. But I feel like I have it. I feel like I have that star quality. I'm going to do this. You know, it's scary. And in that moment, I can I can tell, you know, they both believe they both was just, you know, they were both like, yeah. You know, anything is possible because now my dad, you know, is, is taking steps to start his own business. And my mom is, you know, she started a new job at, you know, at, at, at a place, you know. So now that now that everybody in my family is, is trying new things, you know, so I'm happy about that. That's awesome. You're inspiring them. And I'm sure you're inspiring so much more and are going to continue to do so. So let's talk about, okay, now that you're champion, now it's a whole different game. You got to, you mm-hmm. know, think differently or however. <laughs> so for you... 
what do you want to show the fans and even to yourself as champion? Like, what do you want to show everybody? <laughs> oh, I love this question. I want to show the fans that anything is possible if you have a plan and if you believe. Like, I want to be an inspiration. Like, growing up, I wanted to inspire and I wanted to use wrestling to be the platform that gets my messages out there. You know, and I'm so glad that I have wrestling to do that now. But mainly, I, I wanted to show the kids that you don't have to be what they say you have to be to be this, you know, because growing, I mean, when I was just telling people, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to try wrestling, you know, and I'm going to be a champion, you know, it always, well, you got to get, you got to gain 50 pounds or you got to, you know, do this, or you you know, but I'm, I'm not the same size I was when I first started wrestling. It may look like it, but I've got a little bigger, despite how the belt fell, I've got a little bigger. But, you know, I would just got, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, I don't look like that, but, you know, I'm, I'm hardworking, you know, and, and I'm a fighter, you know, and, and I want to show kids that as long as you're trying, as long as you're willing, and as long as you have the heart to continue, like, great things will happen. You know, I got to mention when the belt fell, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> stop laughing. I thought, I thought it was a very, like, a genuine, cute moment where you can tell, like, this guy is really excited and really happy about what's happening right now that you just, like, you put your arms up and yeah. the belt just went straight down. What did, did you think? Like, oh, snap, I dropped the belt? Yeah, and then I looked at day. It was just a great moment. And then I looked at Damien Priest and, you know, he was just like, it is what it is. But when I took the picture with Triple H, that's that's genuine happiness on my face. You can see it. You can just, what a moment. And then, you know, Triple H, we, we, we took that photo. What an iconic photo. I saw that photo. <laughs> what did Triple H tell you afterwards? Triple H told me, I mean, he told me a lot before he told me after. I mean, he didn't tell me a lot afterwards, not because he wasn't, he was too busy or nothing, but I felt like he, he said, you know, you did good out there. He's like, that's what it was. Like, I think he wanted to let me know, like, I did what I was supposed to do and that he's proud. It wasn't, oh, man, it was so great. He, you know, he didn't have to go over the top, you know, him being the boss. He just let me know, like, you know, you, that's what I, that's, that I, I approve is, is, is what I got from him. And that's what I really, really, uh, you know, appreciate it. And then before I went out there, you know, he's like, hey, we're doing this. We're, you know, we're really doing this. This is really happening. So go out there and enjoy it. You know, he, you know, he said, have fun out there, do what you're supposed to do. And so to come back and he just, you know, he, he gave me like one of the firmest handshakes I've ever seen. He looked me in the eye. And in that moment, I felt, you know, like I, I did. I did Triple H proud. And it must have felt so good, you know, just like getting this validation from people that you've obviously admired throughout the years and whatnot. So let's talk about that. Who um, are some of the people that you, you know, the NXT roster is stacked, okay? Who are some of the people that you would love to face, you know, as champion? Uh, as champion, I would love to face Timothy Thatcher, love to face Adam Cole. Um, I would love to face Tommaso Ciampa again. Definitely love to face him. Also, John again. He's just, just a great guy. Um, Cameron Grimes. Oh yeah. And, and uh, Dexter Loomis. Love, love to work with Dexter Loomis. <laughs> love to work with Dexter. Loomis. You know, I'm excited because, you know, obviously I've been watching NXT each and every single week. Seeing you come out there, I think one of the things that immediately caught my attention or the, what you did that caught my attention was the fact that you're so fast in the ring. I mean, you move like the flat, okay? <laughs> that was one of the things that I noticed right away. So I just kind of wanted to point that out. So let's kind of, you know, since you move like the flash, I know we have a couple of minutes mm -hmm. left, but I yeah. want to play a lightning round game with you just so that we can get to know you a little bit more. So I'm going to ask you 10 10 questions, ask, answer them as fast as you can, and uh, it should be pretty fun. <laughs> okay. So here we go. It is now time for a lightning round oh, with cool. Leon Ruff. I know we got the graphics going. <laughs> We're fancy here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Question number one, favorite wrestling entrance theme? My favorite wrestling entrance theme is Alistair Black's. Question two, who are your top three favorite musicians? top three favorite musician is a band called Capsize. It is a band called The Plot and You and a band called Oh No, Silent Planet. And question number three, do you Google yourself? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you for being on. <laughs> yes, I do, do it. because I have the option now. Yes, I can, and it's so cool. <laughs> question four, <laughs> craziest or most extreme thing you've ever done? Um, the craziest, the most pain. To be honest, I'm not a crazy person. 
Really? I don't do. I'm not a crazy person. I don't do um crazy. I don't. Do, I don't really do crazy things. <laughs> All right, we'll take your word for it. Question five: What movie can you watch on repeat and never get tired of? A movie. Wow, there's a lot of them. I could watch Life. I could watch There's No Country. Uh, no Country for Old Men. Um, you know, a lot of Disney movies I can watch. I mean, but though though I can watch some of those of the movies I can watch over and over again. <laughs> Question and Friday. Six. Oh, that's a good one. Question six. Do you have any pet peeves? Yes, I have a lot of pet peeves. I don't like when people chew with their mouth open. I do not like it when people have like it just cold all the time. Um, what else don't I like? Wait, I when like they're cold all the time? Like when people like in their house, they just like when the teachers oh. will make it cold in the classroom or just everything is just cold. They just have the air on and the fan on and I don't like that. Um, what else? I don't like when people just take my food off my plate or just die. I don't like that. You know, um, what else I don't like? I don't like when people just sneeze and like don't cover their nose. Don't but just, that. Yeah, don't or just, or just yeah, I just don't like that at all. So many pet peeves. You know what? I adore you for this because <laughs> I am on your same boat. I, I'm all for your pet peeves. Question <laughs> seven: Who was the first wrestler you ever met? The first wrestler that I have ever met, and I would say would be. Uh, Finley. I met Finley. I flew on an airplane. The first time I flew on an airplane, I got upgraded to first class. And I sat next to Finley. We were flying to Detroit because they were doing a live show. I mean, besides AR. No, this is before then. Yeah. So so I met uh, I met Finley and I was asking questions about, you know, hey, how to become a wrestler and how to, you know, whatever. And I, I'm pretty sure he was going to invite me to a WWE live show. But I, I, I said something stupid. I think he asked me, where was I going? And I said, Detroit. And we were on a plane. He was like, I mean, yeah, that's what we, you know. But, you know, so that was the first wrestler I met. <laughs> that's awesome. Question number eight. What app do you use the most and which do you use the least? What app I use the most? I would say I use Instagram a lot. I, Instagram is the app that I use the most. The app that I use the least, I would say, I don't know. Uh, Twitter. Twitter. I mean, yeah. Twitter. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm new to it now because I have to have one now, and I'm getting popular now. I mean, I had one before, and I was learning how to use it, but now I really gotta, you know, up it. I'm gonna tell you this now. Twitter is very addicting, so you will get addicted soon enough. <laughs> Question number nine: Do you have any pre-match rituals? Yes, I listen to a lot of um, I listen to like a lot of spoken word um is, is what it's like some of the same songs over and over again but some of them are just be depending on the match or what it is but i listen to like the same songs over and over again um and i pace back and forth <laughs> the it. nervous just, thing right yeah and for whatever I reason I, I get dressed super early like the show won't start till like eight and I, I mean like even on the indies the show might not start till nine and i don't wrestle and i'm like the main so i'm like it's, I, I don't wrestle until 11, and I'm already dressed at, like, 5. Like, I don't know why, <laughs> I but I'm just... Feeling, I think it's the feeling of nervousness, and you're like, I got to be ready, because anything can happen. I got to be yeah, ready. Yeah, at any moment, they could just ring the bell right now. <laughs> you're like, and I'm not going to be ready. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I relate so hard to your personality. I'm just going to leave that there. Uh, last question, question number 10, Dream City to wrestle in. I love this question. I would love to wrestle in Portland, Oregon. I would love to wrestle in Portland, Oregon. I don't know exactly everything they do over there, but I'm pretty sure it's cool. And I'm pretty sure that they have, like, I know it rains there. I know they have, I know it's a great place for, like, photography and stuff. Like, it just looks cool. I always wanted to go to Portland, Oregon. Any, any city in Cali. I know it's only one city, but any city in Cali, I would love to wrestle in. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. And Detroit. Yeah, that's a good one. By the way, Portland's fantastic. I'm out in Los Angeles, so hopefully we see you down here soon. Soon yeah. enough, hopefully. And uh, honestly, Leon, congratulations, man, Thank on you so everything much. that's happening. I'm very excited to see what you're going to do as champion and just what you're going to do, period, in WWE. Before we go, tell people where they can find you on social media. So you can follow me on Instagram at xleonruffx and at Twitter, which is, you'll see it right here, is at Leanna Ruff underscore. I always forget which direction <laughs> points. Leon, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. You are absolutely awesome. I love your energy. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this interview. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Until next time, we'll see you all later. Bye, thank everyone. You for having me. Of course. Bye. <laughs>